Hello, my name is Aaron and welcome to another video. Today we're talking about my top five tips for the Sony A6000. So, at the start of this year, 2020, I picked up a Sony A6000 for the first time. Despite this camera being now six years old, it is still a very powerful camera for photography and video. But since picking up this camera, I've tweaked and changed a few settings to make taking photos and videos a bit easier. And I thought, why not share them with you? But before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. So here are my five tips and tricks for the Sony A6000 in 2020. First up is keeping the camera powered up for longer without it automatically turning off. As default, the Sony A6000 is set to turn off after one minute of idle time, basically no usage. Now generally, I find this isn't long enough while taking the camera out and about. Between shots, I feel like one minute you might not take a photo, the camera will turn itself off, it takes a few seconds to power up again, you might miss your opportunity to take the photo or video you were trying to take. I can understand why the setting is one minute as default, it helps reduce battery consumption, meaning that your camera will last for longer. But personally, I like to up this setting to 30 minutes, which means the camera is always ready to go when you need to use it. So to change this setting, you go to the main menu, then Setup, then on Tab 2, it's under Power, Save, Start Time. And here you can see the different options available. So my second tip is the custom button setup. There are a few buttons, such as C1 and C2 on the camera, which are basically customizable buttons, which you can change to operate whichever functions you find most useful. This is great because these buttons means that you can quickly access these functions instead of having to dig through the menus to find them. Very handy if you need to swap between them very quickly. Now, as standard, C1 is set up to change the focus mode. I actually find this is quite a useful setting, as it means that you can change between manual and autofocus settings very quickly. Now, if you'd like to learn more about focus modes, how they work, and what you can use them for, check out this video here that goes through all these settings in more depth. Now, the C2 button, as a standard, is set to access the in-camera guide. I find this is not a very useful setting, and certainly not required for the quick access through the function buttons. So, I like to change this one on the fly to whichever setting is most useful to me at the time. So, often I will use this for the IAF function, which is the eye autofocus. This basically means you can track your subject eye and keep focused on that. Great for portraits and photos of people. Or you could use it for something like the focus area settings. If you want to focus on a full width of your composition or just a certain area of it, this is quite useful. But I would recommend going through the list of options and seeing which is most useful for you. So to change your custom key settings, you go to main menu, custom settings, tab six, then custom key settings, and here you can see the list of all the different functions that are available. So, my third tip for the Sony A6000 is the self-timer function. Quite a basic function, but I actually find that it isn't the most obvious to find straight away as it is hidden in the drive mode settings. The self-timer can be useful for a lot of situations. If you're taking a photo of yourself and you don't want your hand on the camera like a selfie style, you can set the timer, get in front of the lens, and position yourself ready for your photo. Also great for group shots where you also want to be in the photo yourself. But mostly I use it for taking long exposure photography. Things like landscapes where you want to leave the shutter open for longer and get more detail in your shot. This is particularly useful if you're using a tripod. As long exposure photography works best when the camera is completely still, even pressing the shutter button means that the camera will shake enough that it could ruin your shot. By using the self-timer, the camera body will be completely still before taking the photo. This is when you're using a tripod, of course. So, to set the self-timer, go to Main Menu, Camera Settings, Tab 2, and then Drive Modes. Here you can see the self-timer, which you can set to either 2 or 10 seconds. You can also access the Drive Modes, which has the self-timer in, by pressing left on the function wheel, and then drive modes. So my fourth tip is using the lock on AF, which is lock on autofocus. You can use this to track a moving object and keep it in focus. I find lock on AF very useful if your subject is moving towards or away from the camera, such as someone walking, for example. To access this option, you go to the main menu and then camera settings, tab six, then lock on AF. You'll need to make sure that you're using the focus modes of either AFA or AFC, otherwise this option will probably be greyed out. But once you've activated lock on AF, press the middle button and you'll see this message. Here you can press the middle button again and the camera will track the subject closest to the white box in the middle of the screen. Then press the shutter button when your composition is ready to take your shot. Then once you've finished tracking this particular subject, you can press the middle button again to cancel the tracking. If you are going to use this setting, I do find it's particularly handy to assign it to a custom button as we discussed earlier. So, my fifth and final setting is turning on or off the auto review settings. 
This is basically whether the camera shows a preview of the shot you've just taken straight after you've taken it. Sometimes this is useful if you've taken a single shot and you'll want to review it straight away, but generally I find if you're taking a lot of shots in quick succession, or think you may be, the preview can really slow you down as you have to wait for that to finish before you can take your next shot. So to change the auto review settings, go to Main Menu, Custom Settings, Tab 1, then Auto Review. Here you can see the options for the image to be displayed for either 10, 5, or 2 seconds, or off completely as I use. So there we go, that's five settings I found particularly useful for the Sony A6000. Are there any settings that you use that I haven't mentioned? Let me know in the comments below. But as always, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. And also you can follow me on Instagram at aaron.prescott, where you can see example photos which I have taken with the Sony A6000. But that's it from me for now. Until next time, see ya.